everyone, this is an alcohol-free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. My name is Terry G. And if you can take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel and take another second and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And just remember that recovery is worth it. You might find it difficult at times, but it is worth it. I've been in recovery for many, many years and life has its ups and downs. Just because we're sober doesn't mean life stops. We have to learn to accept life on life terms. We really, really do, good or bad. Before I get started in this video, I wanna tell you a little joke. Do you know the difference between an old timer and a newcomer? You well, know, it's very simple. An old timer will drive two and a half hours to speak, but he won't walk around the corner to listen. <laughs> oh. I always love that joke and when I hear it, it always makes me laugh though. I thought I'd share it because what today's video is about is about speaking at an AA meeting or any other recovery meeting. I'm gonna tell you a little about my experience of speaking and give you some tips or how to's how to do it for your first time, okay? That's what this is about. And remember, when you're speaking at a meeting of any sort, it's a real blessing for the other people to listen to your story and for you to share your life with them. It really, really is. People are so grateful to hear your story. You might not think that, but you might save somebody out there listening to your story in Alcoholics Anonymous or whatever it is, whatever recovery meeting you're, you're speaking at, okay? So I'm just gonna go over a few things that I do in recover and, and before I speak at a meeting, okay? I don't write it down anymore. I do it in my head because I've spoke many times. I speak about six to 10 times a year. First thing I wanna talk to you about, when you speak at a meeting, you should go about 20 minutes. I always feel 20 minutes is about the minimum and about 40 minutes is the, the maximum because you have to give people enough time, the meeting people, the chairperson at the meeting to open the meeting and close the meeting. I've been in meetings as people have spoken over an hour <clears throat> and I can tell the people in the meeting, you know, they're getting agitated. Some people leave right on the hour and they leave. So if you can speak for 20 minutes to 40 minutes, I think 10 minutes and 15 minutes a little short, but I've seen meetings like that and that's perfectly okay. If you get up there and you get nervous and you have to walk off, just go and do it. No one's gonna fault you for doing that. They just love that that you give the effort. But if you can keep it to about 20 minutes to 40 minutes, that would be, for me, it's about the ultimate, the optimal time to speak at any meeting. And I practice that, okay? And another thing that is, if somebody asks you to speak at a meeting and you don't feel comfortable and they're poking you all the time, just say no. I'm not ready. Ask me six months down the road. Recovery is not a walk on coals and speaking in front of a group of people is very terrifying for some of us. It really is. Me, it was, it was very terrifying. So I wasn't ready at times and I would say no. So if somebody asks you to speak, just say no to them if you don't want to. If you don't feel up to it or it's making you too afraid. Eventually, you'll feel that you want to and somebody will come up and ask you and you'll go ahead and do it, okay? so. Sobriety is not a walk on coals. I always say that. We do not have to be people pleasers or yes people in recovery. We don't have to be that. You can do your service work when you're ready. A lot of people say they poke people, they prod people to get active. That's not a good way. I just ask people that don't want to do it. You don't have to do it. You really don't. Okay, so the first thing is, is try and relax. Try and relax. There's nothing worse, I always find, is somebody come up to you a month ahead of time and say, you know, Terry G, can you speak for me? And I say, yes. I'll think about that, that event in the future probably 50 times before it actually happens. And when I go to the event, or not the event, when I go to the meeting, I get really nervous. And I try and relax. I always sit at the back because I always go to the washroom. I always gotta take a leak before I speak. That's the way my nervousness or my anxiety is released. I go to the washroom a lot. I don't know if you can identify that, but it's, that's the truth. So I sit at the back where the washroom is. And just before I go up to speak, I know that I know the cues and the meetings, the way they go. I can just go in the washroom, go for my last time before I go up and speak because that's the way I do it. So relaxing is a big part of speaking, but it's a hard part of speaking. It really is. It's a hard part to get up there and be relaxed, especially for the first time or even the first half a dozen times or a dozen times. It's really difficult. A lot of speakers make it look easy, but they've probably done it several times. 
a novice at it or a junior speaker sort of thing, somebody who hasn't spoke very long, many times, can be very nervous and be very conscientious of what they're saying. And that includes you, but that's okay. Just go up and do it anyways. If you want, go up and do it, okay? But follow these points and you're not gonna fail. First thing is, if you can get yourself relaxed a little bit, which I say is hard, write it down. Write it down, plan your talk, plan it. Just get a little piece of paper, a little cold notes version of your talk, put it down on a piece of paper and you can follow that. In case you get nervous and you lose your place, you can just follow your, your, your cues that you've written down. But the way I do it, and I always do it, is the way they talk about it in the big book. Sharing our experience, strength, and hope. That's how you can label it. Experience, strength, and hope. Experience is like this, and it's broken down like this, in my opinion. Experience is, if you had a crummy childhood, you know, your life as a family unit when you're, when you're growing up, you can talk a little about that. Talk about your drinking, like they call it in, in recovery, your drunk log if you want. You can tell people about that, about your drinking, because you got to qualify when you speak, and that's part of the way of qualifying. And that could be the first section of when you're talking. Some people get carried away in the drunken log. They make the drunken log, you know, a half an hour of their speak and then the recovery, 10 minutes. And that's kind of a, a rookie error that a lot of people do. So if you can make your drunken log, say you're speaking for a half an hour, you can make your drunken log and your experience 10 minutes. So you talk about your childhood, you talk about what it was like when you were out there drinking and things you experienced in drinking, things that got you in trouble. Maybe you got in trouble with the cops. Maybe you, you know, you went bankrupt several times or several wives or whatever it is. It's usually kind of funny sometimes when you hear people's drunk a log, the crazy stuff that people get involved with. You can talk about that as much as you want, but try and keep it in sections for you don't get off, off uh, track. Okay, so keep the experience, the, the experience to, uh, you know, Call them, uh, you know, make it in sections. That's the word I'm looking for. Keep it in sections. That's the way I do it. Then blend it in to the strength. The strength is basically when you got off, but for me, when I got off the streets of alcoholism and where drug and alcohol took me and I entered into recovery. And that's the part that where you have the strength, how you work the steps, how maybe you entered in the program and you got to your, this point that you're honest with yourself and it was step one that you took. And this willingness to change, how you operate it in step two, the willingness. Step three, how you became more open-minded to better way of living. And you can always talk about those other steps that everybody's really freaky about, and that's step four, step five. Those steps always get people's attention because people have difficulties with those. But you can share that, how you did that, Give them your strength and what the feelings that you got from those steps. Six and seven, you know, the character defects. What are your character defects? You can talk about that and how you got your character defects under control and your life benefited from working those steps. And the other ones that people are terrified about is step eight and nine, doing those amends. You can talk about that and how you reunite it with your family how you reunite it with them and how your relationships have grown because of the steps, your relationship with a higher power, how you feel better emotionally, how you feel better spiritually because of the program. You can talk about step 11, how you improve your conscious contact with a higher power if you want. And you can talk about the granddaddy of them all, step 12, how you continue to carry the message. You joined a home group, you're active in that home group, you have a few sponsees, you're helping people out, you're going to detention centers, you're going to detox centers, you're spending all your time recovering and carrying the message of recovery. That's what you can talk about, how your struggles, working the steps and working the traditions in Alcoholics Anonymous or whatever program you're in. And the last one is your hope. And a lot of people don't talk about hope a lot in recovery when they speak. And you, you may find it out that when you listen to a speaker, the whole part is usually pretty small. We miss that part. And the whole part is, what is your life like now as a result of recovery? A result of working the steps or working the program you're in. 
smart recovery, maybe you're in a church group, whatever it is, but working that program, what is the result of your life? What is it like for myself? Remarried, great job, good health, my relationships with my family is better, I know the needs between my needs and my wants. I have better understanding of boundaries. So my relationships around me work, work relationships, friend relationships has improved dramatically. My financial situation has improved. I have a car. My stickers are up to date on my car. My cell phone bill is paid all the time, my cell phone. You know, I never had a phone when I drank. I never paid the bills. I have food in the fridge. You could talk about those kind of things relationship with your children have improved, those kind of things. Give people hope, you've traveled, whatever it may be, because of being sober, the gift of being sober, having sobriety. What are those gifts that we've gotten out of the program? What have we understood? People go through the prom, the, pro, the, uh, the promises. We don't fear people, places, and things anymore. In, you can read a few promises off in, the, in Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, you can read that. But tell people some hope. Give people some hope. The guy in the back row or the gal in the first seat who's sitting there hanging on to your life saying, I'll never be sober. I'll never get it. Life is too crummy. I'll never get it. But you can share your experience, strength, and hope and tell people recovery is possible. It is possible. Really is. Talk about service in recovery, things that you've done. Me, I've been a GSR. I've been intergroup. I've done all kinds of service at the group, group level, helping other people. Tell it, tell it how big your life is because of recovery. Let people know what it's like to be sober and what life can become for them. They can have children, get a regular job. They can do all that because everything is possible in recovery. And you can tell people that when you speak. You can tell them that by telling them your story how you got out of the depths of hell of alcoholism. You can do that, okay? You really can. Recovery is possible, and you can demonstrate that to people when you speak. You can demonstrate that, okay? So these are a few pointers that I follow. I'm a big believer in keeping things very simple, not getting things out of hand that we're, we're losing our track. Keep it simple. I am not that important. I'm really not. I'm the carrier of a message of recovery. I'm the vessel, I'm the speaker. That's all I am. And that's how I play it. I, wherever, where it goes, it's in God's hands. I'm just gonna say it, I'm just gonna do the best I can. And that's all anybody can ever ask of anyone. Just do the best you can from where you're at, okay? Enjoy speaking, enjoy your recovery. Enjoy it, because I enjoy mine, okay? My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. You can take a second. Can you please subscribe to my channel? Take another second, hit that like button. But you can leave a comment too if you want, okay? I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Just remember, there's no I in team. Um, yeah, <laughs> I always get this mixed up. There's no I in team. Alcohol. Lism journey recovery is a team sport. It's not a I, it's not an I sport. It's a team sport. Together we can be sober. Together we are stronger when it comes to recovery. Okay? See you later. See you next week. God bless. Stay sober. Stay safe. My name is Terry G, and I'm over and I'm out. <laughs>